a happy day The light of love is inviting us to come play There's nothing we can do that'll waste our time So come, let's drink out of this fat jug of wine there are so many reasons why I wanted to come to Canada, but um, I think the main one is that um, Canada is a country which is full of opportunities and the sky is the limit. Familiar Strangers is an exhibit in the form of what is known as installation art. This one-of-a-kind display was created by local photographer Kara Jones. Okay, when I moved back to Anakinish, um, I hadn't lived in a small town in a really long time. And coming from a place like Anakinish, you're constantly hearing about people and seeing them every day and hearing what's your father's name, what does he do. And then I started noticing that every day I was seeing the same people. Going to the coffee shop and, uh, you know, I'm walking down the streets in, in the grocery store and uh, they were becoming really familiar faces to me, but complete strangers still, even though we had conversations and we talked and whatnot. After my exhibition, I became intrigued by the lives and the stories behind the faces of the familiar strangers. There was one woman in particular. She jumped out of the frame and into my heart, inspiring me with her unbelievable passion and her amazing ability to empower and change the lives of all those who came across her path. There are so many struggles you face as an immigrant when you come to a new country and when you prepare to come. However, when we arrived here, that's when things were very difficult. Because when I came, I was a qualified high school teacher and I was excited that I was going to teach in Canada only to arrive here and oh oh da <laughs> the your credentials are not accepted here so I had to start from scratch one I had to go to school but I didn't have any school fees to pay my tuition fee so guess what in Zimbabwe I had my own house I had my own maid to make my house my bed and everything but I tried to look for a job. Could I find a job? No, I couldn't. I ended up working at Lord Beaverbrook Hotel in Fredericton as a maid, making beds and making houses in order for me to raise my tuition fee. So I worked there, raised my tuition fee, went to UNB, University of New Brunswick, did my, my diploma, my master's and went back to Zimbabwe and came back in 2001 and started to do my PhD and finished my PhD, graduated in 2005 and here I am a professor at St. FX University, one of the best universities in the world. Whoever knew that a poor little girl growing in rural Africa would reach this far, but it's because of Canada. And in my life, I live on four words in my principle. Faith, hope, perseverance, and resilience. As a teacher, I, my main hope was that I would be able to inspire other girls just to be like me, and not only to be like me, but even to surpass me. And my main hope was to inspire my sisters, my cousin sisters, and all other women within the community I come from. And that's exactly what I've done. I have tried to send money, to send them to school, to send them to colleges, and I'm not that I'm praising myself, but I have sisters who are nurses, who are doing their PhDs, who are working, who are professionals, who are all over the country, all over the world. You know, growing up in a society where women's place is at the home, remember, I went to school in the 1970s, and from a cultural perspective, that women are not, they are valued, but in terms of going to school, they are not the same as men. And to be honest with you, I had to be a rebel in my own in order for me to advance because my father didn't want to pay tuition for me because I was a girl. 
So again, I had to work for my tuition. And I think I got it from my mom. Because when I looked at my grandmother, my grandmother didn't go to school. My mom went to school only up to grade three. So I didn't want to live the life my grandmother lived and my mother lived. So I knew from the day one that I knew what I want to be. I wanted to be a teacher or a nurse and no one was going to stop me. I had to go against the culture. And for your own information, I was the first girl in my clan to complete high school. I was the first girl to pass high school. I was the first girl to get a master's degree. I am the first woman to get a PhD and the first woman to be a professor in the whole village where I come from. I think one advice I would like to give to new immigrants is that when they arrive in a community, for example, a community like Andigonish is so small and you move around, you see the same people, but you don't really know them. Uh, but every time you say, wow, that person is a familiar. So they become familiar strangers. And guess what? The advice I would give people if you move to a small community is extend your hand and reach to the familiar stranger so that the familiar stranger becomes a friend in need and a friend to help and a friend to help you. Comes around again, oh, I'm going back to where I left my friends, yeah. Oh, I'm going back to where I left my friends, yeah. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do